Welcome to our series, Fine Poetry, Poems That Touch Deeper Chords. Today, Michael Dillon. We were unable to find any biographical data about Michael Dillon on the internet. There is a book of his from the UK listed at a staggering price of 97 pounds, titled Poems of Truth. However, a small selection of his poems is available in the excellent volume by Alan Jacobs, Mystical Verse. Old Wineskins. How hard it is for narrow-visioned man to break away from long-held, fond ideas, to overthrow the teachings of his youth, to burst asunder personality and launch himself upon the sea of truth, and walk upon the waters free of fears, aware this is the only way he can make any progress in the realm of thought or open up the channels of the mind at present blocked by so much worldly lore, by prejudice, convention, and the rest, that education and example store in him with precepts all which make him blind and hide from him the fact of knowing naught. Atonement, not for the faint of heart the search for truth, not for the weak of will or dull intent, beset with troubles from the very start Pull back by shackles, torn apart be doubts, until from perseverance from the dark a tiny ray of light shines down the way to show a single step ahead, no more. And if the eyes by then are not too blind, by lengthy struggle with the written word. And if the ears at last are not too deaf from listening to the sounds of argument, and if the teeming brain is not too dulled to grasp the truth so long and hardly sought, then all materialism falls in place. A true perspective of the world is grasped, where earthly lusts and wants no longer count for more than they are worth in proper place. All merge together in the true desire which rises over all and with it brings the sense of happiness, because the feet are set upon the rightful way to God, to reach at one moment with the trinity of beauty, truth, and love eternally. Adversity. Look in, not out. So seek we not to blame another for our anger, grief, or shame. It matter not how much we have been tried. By no event can we be justified. While we may feel some cause for what we do, we have a right not to be wrathful, too. 
This right is one that few can realize, and fewer still will try to exercise. How strange it is, we like to feel abused. In pity of ourselves, so hardly used. A pleasure false, which cunningly deludes, and chance of real happiness precludes. Were we but willing just to pay the price, and this our suffering to sacrifice, no longer like to feel mistreated so, immeasurably in stature we would grow. No brooding on our wrongs, no inner strife. We would be master of ourselves and life. Reincarnation. Can any think that this is the end of all? That this one life determines each his fate? That deeds of violence Thoughts so full of hate, and all the wickedness that from the fall of man hath filled the world with bitter gall, with pain and suffering, the common state throughout mankind, which years cannot abate one whit, that from such depths is not recall, no chance that by experience each may learn and live again to test himself anew, correct mistakes, or fail to discern the error of his ways or lusts subdue. Must life on life not come ere we can win to perfect good or sink beneath our sin? Who is I, so diligent in search, no stone unturned? He strove to find the truth for which he yearned. And when at last a teacher he descried, I want to know, I have long sought, he cried, I heard some say, I read somewhere of this. I long to find the path of perfect bliss. Amid the clamor loud, the teacher gave a sigh. Then quietly he asked the question, Who is I? The speaker stopped and gaped a moment. Then he thumped his chest and raised his voice again. I am Aloysius Smith. From far I come. I left my family and friends and home. I search for truth. This pearl of price I seek. If you can help, I beg you now to speak. He paused, and in the hush there came a second sigh. Again he heard the quiet question, Who is I? His parted lips this time, no sound came through. At last his teeming brain had caught the clue. He dropped his eyes before the teacher's gaze. His hands hung limp. No longer could he raise his head, but sank upon one knee, bowed low, as one who had received a stunning blow his pride was pierced. He gave a heartful sigh and 
softly speaking, said, Sir, show me, who is I? Sonnet on a sleeping world, awake and yet asleep. The whole world lies unconscious of its own unconscious state, destructive of itself and blind to fate, ignoring all the warnings of the wise. For here and there, a man may waken, rise, shake off the shackles ere it be too late, his mind to master anger, greed, and hate, drive out and penetrate the veiled disguise of man mechanical, his nature true, which he perceives his helplessness he knows. All others cling to dreams that they can do whate'er they will, themselves mere puppet shows, their strings worked by events, nor do they heed the call to rouse as slaves from fetters freed. Happiness, e'en as the butterfly upon a twig, forestalls the hunter's net and flits away, alighting on a leaf beyond his grasp, until the hunter, scratched and laboring, climbs, the net once more aloft and ready to descend, too late again, the butterfly is gone. So man pursues what he deems happiness, elusive, hovering, always out of reach. A wisp of light that acts as a decoy to lure men to the fens of discontent, which suck them down in unfulfilled desires. The lust for luxury and ease of life, which they mistake for happiness of mind. Yet, in the world, this lesson has been taught. Through all the years by those whom heaven sent, desires breed desires. When from them free, man only then becomes what man should be. And the last poem, The Face of God. Standing amid the painted skies of the off-white heavens, dark within its bright embrace, staring keenly into the face of God himself, questioning his motives, pondering his thoughts, taking for a brief moment a glimpse through his eyes. See the world as I do, he commands. Know your existence as it is. See what is and see what could be. Now make it so.